Well, <laughs> welcome to the Dark Mark Show. It's the lighter side of the dark side. I am Dark Mark, the goth comedian. And uh, what a show we got tonight. It's going to be amazing. Meow. Uh, I've uh, got my uh, co-host there, Josie Cat. Josie, you want to say hello to the Dark Minions out there? Hello, Dark Minions. We've got a great show tonight. This is going to be f fantastic. Uh, we've got an, an extra guest tonight, I see. Uh, Nomi's here. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and we have we have legends. We have uh, superstars. We have some of the most fascinating people in L.A. here. Uh, and Josie's here. But uh, we have... Uh, Fuck you, Mark. We have, we have a legend in the studio. We have... Uh, uh, if you're a big Ramones fan like I am, you know he, him. He drummed on the uh, albums uh, Animal Boy, uh, uh, Too Tough to Die, Halfway to Sanity, drummed 500 shows with him. If you're a Ramones fan like Josie Cat, you're like, oh, wow, Marky Ramone's coming on the show. But no, not Marky Ramone. Richie, I did not say that. I got the text, I I got the text right here. Richie Ramone is on the show. And Richie Yo, Ramone, yeah, what's going on, man? He's got a great new uh, album. It's called Entitled, and we're going to talk about all sorts of stuff. And next to you, Richie, uh, you, uh, with one of the most fascinating people in L.A., I would say. It's hard to encapsulate everything you do in, like, a sentence. I'm trying to explain to people That's why I like that the L.A. Weekly said P.T. Barnum with boobs, which I thought was really cool because that was, like, fair. It's a, you know, it's a little bit of everything. Yeah, you, I, 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 I did notice you do have boobs. That yeah. is true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> P.T. Barnum with boobs. Uh, people compared you to Jessica Rabbit. I, I actually, I think you're the 21st century Andy Warhol, to be honest oh, with you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of pop art in there. Lenora Claire. And uh, and we've got so much to talk about. I've been uh, as Ruth, Josie will tell you when I have beautiful female guests on, I do a lot of research. A lot of research. A lot of research. A big research. So I did a lot of a lot of research for the show. But uh, but when we do the uh, the uh, no Hollywood report, but I'm going to do the, uh, the sponsors really quick because we, we got so much to talk about with both of you. Um, Doomy's home cooking has Sunday Yum. brunch back. And, and Phil Doomy said to say hi to you. Oh, he's great. He's great. The, the food is fantastic. You know that it's vegan food. You would never know it's vegan. It's amazing. No. It's just delicious food that just happens to be vegan. They're doing the Sunday brunch. I went to the Sunday brunch this, this Sunday. It was delicious. $4 mimosas, $15 all you can eat. Uh, they're open till 3 o'clock on Friday and Saturday. If, you, uh, if you're in L.A. or you're visiting L.A., just go to uh, Doomy's Home Cooking. I'm trying to find the address here. I should have this memorized by now. 1253 Vine Street, Hollywood, California, 90038. Uh, Doomy's Home Cooking if you're ever in L.A. Also, go to darkmarchshow.com. Because we have two sponsors, Audible.com. Audible.com, you can get a free audiobook and a free 30-day trial at Audible.com. Uh, they have uh, they have punk, punk rock Blitzkrieg, My Life is a Ramon. That's Marky Ramon. We don't want to talk about that. Uh, but they have, uh, well, if you're interested in Ramon, why not? Check it out. You get it free, why not? So uh, they've also got, uh, they've also got uh, uh, just uh, whatever you want. Fifty Shades of Grey, you want to get into that. Whatever you want to get into. Stephen King books. Kelsey Handler's biography. It's, I hope it's better than the book. Really? The, the audio. Did the book bored you? I did better stuff in one week than that whole entire book. I couldn't finish it. It was so bad. Well, when, it, why don't you write The Fifty Shades of Josie? That may be good. <laughs> but if, what, what, if somebody, be more than Fifty Shades. But if somebody wants to see what the fuss is about, they don't want to pay for it, go to darkmarkshow.com, click on the Audible link, Too sign busy. up with your Amazon account. Yeah, and then whatever. And then you got it made. Also, stamps.com. We got stamps.com, which has been a sponsor for a couple of months. Josie had no idea. But if you go on stamps.com, there's a little stamps.com. If you go to darkmarkshow.com, right to my, next to my smiling face, I'm doing it so fast, nobody's even going to do this. But click on stamps.com. You get a $100 free trial. They get a, you get a scale. You get free postage. Hey, you know what you could do with those scales. We know about scales. But, but you get free postage. You don't have to wait in line in the post office. Just print postage on your, on your uh, computer, put them on your packages, put them on your envelopes. Throw them in the mailbox. You don't never have to go to the post office again. Just go to stamps.com. Scales, weed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we, 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 we got, yeah, we, we got all those letters we write. <laughs> right. yeah, I, I, all, I think yes. Richie, Richie Ramone, uh, yeah. you, you're part of the Ramones. Now, I found a lot of love. I actually researched Richie in a different way than I did research for Lenore. But well, you, were a child pro, you were a child prodigy is what I read. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, you were touring as uh, when you were seven. No, not seven. Well, you were a professional musician when you were yeah, a kid? Yeah, I mean, I was playing live like 10, 11, yeah. But. Okay, you, so you were playing live at 10 and 11. Oh, yeah. I mean, what mm -hmm. were you playing, though? Mm -hmm. I was playing like in the Catskills for all the comedians up there in New York. In New York, you know where the, the Catskills are? So you were like doing the rim shots at 10? No, I was playing with a band, reading charts and everything. Oh, okay. My, my, my older brother that? was in a band, and uh, so I played with him. You know, he was like six years older than me, so I was like six years ahead of my time. 
So when I was like nine, I was really 15. Right. <laughs> So, and yeah, I was, no, and I was then we played being... weddings and bar mitzvahs. I was the type of kid that didn't have to work at Burger King because you were always doing. You were right. always, your drumming was always so good that you could always get a job. Yeah, well, I started at five. I've been playing fifty years now. Wow, and uh, and and uh, and here you are on the Dark Mark show. So yeah. that's a it's a long journey right right here to Skid Row yeah. Studios. But uh, I, I also read that when you auditioned for the Ramones, and the Ramones, if, if people don't know, and I you know, if you're listening to the show, I don't know what what, what but Tommy Ramone was the original drummer. Correct. And then uh, Marky Ramon took over, I think, the third or fourth album. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Marky apparently uh, had a drinking problem and uh, right. was too... Like musicians do now and then. Right. So <laughs> it was a little too fucked up for the Ramones. And then, uh, and then you auditioned, but you didn't have any Ramones records when you auditioned. No, I wasn't, you know... It's funny. Like, I never had a poster on my wall. I wasn't really, a, like, a fan of anybody, really. I, I listened to everything as a kid, you know? Right. And so I never really had like, you know, Ramones post or anything like that. But you were, were you jazz but I, trained but I, like a lot of. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I did a lot of, you know, I studied, you know, five years old. I had a teacher. I read music and all that kind of stuff. So, right. But, um, but I mean, I saw the Ramones and stuff live and everything. Right. Before. You were in New York when the, when, when the punk scene broke. No, a little later. Okay. I really didn't get on that scene till like 79, 80. I was yeah. a lot younger than them. And, and what'd you think when you when you got there? Huh? Oh, when you saw fabulous. Ramones live? Oh yeah, I saw them actually in New Jersey. Like when I was in high school, I snuck in and took some friends. It was kind of weird because you know you were listening to arena rock then, and right. But it, you know, I really dug it. So. Right, so, and then you snuck in, so that you know you, you yeah. had very punk rock. Yeah, and, but you had to borrow somebody's Ramones records to actually uh, get the uh, get the. Uh, no, the label gave me some. I oh, think, okay, to learn. So was it the label that uh, got you the audition, or? Uh... No, it's funny. I was, uh, I used to hang out, you know, the Shirts were a band, you know, with Andy Golden. Now, if you remember the Shirts, they played CBGBs, and they had a house in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Three-story house, just a party house, 24 hours. They had a recording studio, and everybody would hang there. Right. And then the roadie, Little Matt, was, you know, he was uh, shooting up in the corner, and he said, oh, I got to go now. And I said, where are you going? He says, well, the Ramones are auditioning drummers. I said, well, put my name in the hat. And that's just how it happened. You know, the, the road manager called me, and I went down there. Did you say he was shooting up in the corner? He yeah. was shooting up in the corner, yeah. and then he oh, got okay. the so He's multitasking. Uh, yeah, I got the audition. Some guy shooting up in the corner. And, uh, yeah. In and, and out, in and out, in and out. Right. The blood, in and out. It's and, like, oh, Matt, come on. <laughs> and then he went, and and then I got the call. So being in the right place at the right time worked. But it was really weird. I was like, and see, people say don't hang out with junkies. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, just make sure, make sure they, you just wake him up and say, put my name in the hat, and there you go. You could be a Ramon. He was a part time junkie. Yeah, and okay. uh, so, so and so and when you joined the band, uh, I think the the was it Subterranean Jungle was recorded, but it was just finished. Yeah, and so that's you, why that cover you see. They knew they were getting rid of Marky, so they put him in the window. They didn't put him in right. where, the, where the doors they're, open. They're and, on a subway, and he's yeah. in the window, and they're, yeah, they're like in little, the doorway. Right. And so you were in the videos, and you were on that tour. Yeah, the first thing we did is came to L.A. and shot uh, psychotherapy here in Los Angeles. Right. Before right. I even played a show, we did that. Right. And uh, your first show with the Ramones, how, uh, how, did, how were you, how were you, uh, how'd the crowd uh, take to it? Well, I don't, you know, Ramones fans are very... Uh, particular you know and yeah. i think you know it took a little time for me to grow on them it wasn't like you know right away they were like ooh and ah you know right. so it took a while uh, but you I know mean, <laughs> to get the respect did you detect some animosity in the crowd or you did you just do a new drama you didn't really care nah, maybe a little animosity sure right you know like who's this right head, you know uh, yeah. you know where's marky right 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 but that you know, all changed, you know, as I started writing and singing and, and, and everything. The, the junkies in the crowd are like, where's Tommy? But right. uh, <laughs> anyway, Lenora Claire, I was telling Rich about Lenora Claire. It's hard to, I mean, there's so many things that you do that uh, I don't know where to start. But, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, LA Weekly said you were most, one of the most fascinating people in, in LA. And I remember somebody told me, uh, it was a few years ago, and this happens a lot. People tell me about somebody, and then I meet them, like, sure. right afterwards. So that's what happened. One of my friends like, you ever, you ever seen Lenora Claire? And I saw your picture, and... I think I had the same reaction everybody does when they see you. It was like, wow. Oh, and and then uh and then this is and then I saw you. This is basically what kind of broke you nationwide and really got you a lot of attention was the uh Golden Gals Gone Wild oh, exhibit. Right. Yeah. 
And that it, was fun. I was there. <laughs> I was kind of major. Yeah. I, I thought it was Golden Girls Gone Wild, but apparently no. with the copyright. Yeah, I had to be careful. That was funny. Um, it wasn't Disney Touchstone that came after me with the Golden Girls thing. It was actually Girls Gone Wild. I got a letter from uh, really? that, horrible, <laughs> that horrible douchebag when he was in jail. He sent I was me a say, letter. Wasn't he in jail? You know, Joe Francis is in jail. There do. Yeah, and he sent me a letter, and I was like, and he's like, I'm going to send you a cease and desist. I'm going to see you. I was like, please do. I would love that press because you know TMZ right. and NPR not enough press. Like, let's keep this going. Absolutely. And, and the the fact that I was like really like bring it on like to actually terrified him so nothing ever happened but yeah no, right. that was a big show it was really funny I um yeah I did it and like within an hour of announcing it like TMZ NPR National it was just blew up and it was such a great experience and, and describe to Richie what that was because uh, we, we were there <laughs> sure yeah. um it was well I had four, I commissioned 40 artists to do erotic interpretations of the golden girls it was everything from like golden shower girls to just like <laughs> oh, Arthur. Okay. it was it was incredible and like be <laughs> Arthur with a whip yeah it was really <laughs> fabulous and like like literally I was in like National Enquirer. It was everywhere. CNN, News Scroll, all over my like stupid ideas. So, um, and I ended up bringing it to a second museum, the World Erotic Museum, in Miami. Now, this right. was really fabulous. When I got there, there was um, a ton of senior swingers who were waiting for me. <laughs> like, nice. at the airport. like my version of being like the Beatles or whatever. Like no one ever is going to wait for me at the airport, but the senior swingers did. <laughs> all all they, those guys <laughs> with walkers and hard ons, like I've been waiting for you, my yeah. heart. Yeah, they're like, you validate our movement, whatever. So they took me back to the museum. And, um, you know, my, my family are like Jewish New Yorkers. I grew up here. So, right. you know, as you do, they, they moved to Florida, right? So this was like my, my version of my grandparents, essentially. Right. So there's all these like, you know, bubbies there. And they, they had out this amazing like lox, cream cheese, and bagel spread. And then they uh. all got nude. <laughs> and they were... I know, and I was just in this room going like, I've I've clearly done something right in my life. When this is uh this is what I'm doing today. So. I, don't, I don't even want to know where the cream cheese went. It's, it's just taking. Yeah, that show is really fun. It's taking me a lot of strange <laughs> On the bagel. places. Yeah. <laughs> but I've, I've done other shows don't like eat the bagels. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Um, when Betty Page passed away, her estate approached me, and I curated a show in her honor, which was mm -hmm. great because I got to bring like Olivia's art and just really honor Betty properly. I think you were at that. I was show. at that. One. Yeah, it was really. I fun. thought I was at that one too. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. great. And actually, I'm working on another show right now. Um, it's going to be called Put a Lid on It, and it's all art on toilet seat lids. And I'm going to build actual what I call art installations, which will be actual. Yeah, it'll be actual oh, bathrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Stalls. And so, because my whole thing is the idea of practical art. Like, why is it that art has to be something sacred on the wall? Right. And and not something like, like, why do we have all these boring uniform white toilets when we could have something really fabulous and special? So, right. are you going to be selling the toilet lids? Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Oh, wow. So, where is your head that you think of all this stuff? It's I mean, a really weird place. Mm. <laughs> my, my, I always say my, my dad was a urologist and then a psychiatrist. So, my childhood was nuts. Right, and yeah. I think that, right, that explains a lot of, of what I'm doing. And I'm also directing my first documentary right oh, now. Oh, I'm going to get to that. We'll, oh, yeah. we'll get to that. Oh, I got, yeah, I got, yeah. I got, I got oh, it yeah. all. Don't worry about it's, it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even lot. know. I mean, but you, 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 you're always stylish, and you always, you're like a throwback. You're curvy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, you know, I was, I was telling Richie. I mean, the, the girls are getting more anorexic, and I know. but I mean, I, I, I like the curves. I like, but what's well, me? What, there you go. You got well, yeah, no, to trust, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. You don't want to know what's happening under the desk, but I, uh, oh, I you was, wish. <laughs> well, something's happening under the desk, but. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, I was telling uh, you know, I, I was telling a couple people today. I, I, I when I Marilyn Monroe, Betty Page, Russ Meyer movies, you see the girls are su they're sucking in their gut. They have a little pooch, but they're the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Yeah. I love the curves. I love the big. I don't know. Is it just me? And and we've kind of lost that. Um, I don't think it's just you. I mean, I think people respond to it as well. I mean, the thing is about fashion is fashion is made to be like a walking coat hanger and the women aren't actually supposed to be sexual. They're supposed to be, you know, showing off the fashion. So high fashion is very slim build. But if you really ask most men what they prefer, I, I think it is a curvier They want to ask and some yeah. tits right. to grab yeah. on. But, but you, you, uh, it, <laughs> what do you think about that? I prefer the brain. The oh, brain. That was oh, sweet. That's, that's a good answer. Good job. But you guys, you guys, are, you guys. Brain are, fucking someone is uh, a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> you brain fucked me a couple times, but but you guys are sort of. I mean, you're 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 on the on the cutting edge of news because I saw today. Apparently, there's some old nude pictures of Betty White that came out. Yeah, you know what? That's actually kind of old news. They've been around before, but it's every couple of years people right. find them again and are like, oh my goodness. But she did pinups. And what's funny is the woman who played Blanche, she's supposed to be the saucy one, their roles were reversed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Origi like, it was just a few days before the, the Rose and the Blanche roles were reversed. Okay. And um, and yeah, Betty Betty did tons of, she did amazing news. I don't know which one came out this time. Was the one with the earmuffs? Was that I, the one? I, I, didn't, I, didn't, oh, I, didn't, I didn't see them, but. There's uh, a ton. Know, there's a ton of nude Betty White. Well, now out there. photos in her 90s? 
No, no, from the photograph of the 40s. Oh. Well, trust trust me, well, when lawyers are trying to get her oh. to pose, I, you would that's love so, to see her. She loves it. Grannies.com. Yeah. No, she, yeah, she knows about the show. <laughs> right. she, I, she has one of the posters, right. so she was actually really supportive of well, it. So, speaking of something that's been out for a long time, but it's just mm-hmm. getting traction now, is the Bill Cosby thing, which, which, oh, which, which leads me to the, the song that you wrote for the Ramones that is uh, a, a classic. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's on every Greatest Hits. They even played it on their last show. Was uh, somebody put something in my drink? Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, what? What's uh, tell us the, briefly the story behind that? I, I've got well, an that idea. was written about Bill Cosby. Really? You hang out? You hang out with Bill Cosby? <laughs> Did he, he put something roofie? in your drink? Come over here, Richie. I'm gonna put something in your drink. When I first moved to the East Village, you know, uh, you know, we had no money. I was a kid, and we go to the clubs, and when people got up to dance, we'd steal the drinks. Right. So that's how we got to drink for free. And, so you're sneaking you know, the clubs, you're stealing yeah. people's drinks. Yeah, and then one night one was laced with something. So wow, that's how that song came about. Was it good? Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> was it good? I didn't, have to, like, didn't have to steal any like, more bonus. drinks. <laughs> bonus drink. So, so it, was, it was acid, I think? Or, yeah, yeah. Or who knows, but uh, wow. So and uh, But it was hallucinogenic, but the weird thing about that is it's different if you know you're taking it, right. but if you don't mm-hmm. know... You start to get weird, like, what's happening to me? And, and then you realize maybe, you know, an hour right. later, that's what it must be. And that became a, a staple, and, and so much so that even on the Ramones' last show, right, which you weren't yeah. on, right. every other Ramon was there, right. they played it. Mm-hmm. And, and were you invited to the last show? Good, or it's good. Were you no. invited to the last show? Mm-mm. No. I mean, I could have went. Right? Because Dee Dee was there, I think. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I don't know if Tommy was there, but... Uh, we were kind of strained at that point. Right. So. I mean, just... just uh, Is that you how you say you, that you, word? Yeah. Well, uh. <laughs> you can say whatever you want. Well, well, say Fox. I mean, you, yeah, you, we, you, we you, like it. We, we, you, you drummed on Too Tough to Die, which I, I think uh, most people say was the really last great Ramones record. Right. Animal Boy, which is good, and, and mm-hmm. Halfway to Sandy. And then and then what happened? What do you mean? How, how, how did you leave the band? Well, there was, you know, I, wa- I wanted, you know, some more stuff. You know, I was only, I was still a punk kid, 29, and, you know, there was right. a lot of stuff going on with, you know, I wanted some T-shirt money, you know, and shit right. like that. and Because um, they were selling T-shirts like this that had Richie on it. Yeah, well, they had some with my photo and everything, you know, and it was like, okay, I've been here five years, let's, you know. So they were selling T-shirts that had your picture on it, and Name, you, you got picture, nothing. Yeah. Uh, that always yeah. happens to the drummer. My, my, my father's a drummer, my brother is, you know, I dated the drummer. The main drummer for the Cramps. Right. So Name just, dropper. Yeah. It was <laughs> like he didn't get any of the merch. And right. I I don't want to speak ill of, you know, Lux and Ivy. I right. love them. But, uh, but they didn't pay your they, ex-boyfriend. None of the drummers got paid, ever. And if they did, maybe you'd still be together. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was that and, you know, it was just, you that know, that was our last record on Sire. So we had no more label deal and... You know, with Sire, we were getting big advances, you know. Because the story I heard was that uh, uh, you were... <laughs> I know you, 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 know, you know what I'm talking heard about. It. This is what I heard and I read. That, uh, uh, that uh, first off, I read that you and Joey got along great. Yeah, and Dee Dee. You and Dee yeah. got along great. You actually played drums and helped produce his first rap single, mm-hmm. which Josie didn't even know he did a rap single. Right. He did a whole rap album. Funky Man. Stayed away from that. Dee Dee King, Funky Man. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and so... Yikes. So, it's it's not bad. It's all right. Uh, it, I mean, it's it's like Beastie Boys. It was like the Beastie Boys sort of sounded like that. Uh, kind of. Well, the Beastie Boys used to be a punk rock band, right? right. So it sort of sounded group, like that. Boy band, right? With I mean, the girl drummer. It was pretty mm-hmm. fabulous. So it didn't sound like Drake or Kanye West. It was sort of like in that vein of of, of License to Hill. But he was Dee Dee King, and Dee Dee called me Broadway. You were that Broadway. Was that was your name. rap yeah. name, yeah. Broadway Rich, or just Broadway? <laughs> That's Broadway. So 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 what I read was uh, that Jeff you said because. Halfway to Sandy was coming out. Right. And you said, and they were doing doing two shows in in, uh, in New York, you know, for MTV and the whole press. And you said, I want $500 for each show or I'm leaving. No, I don't remember saying that. What? I sh- should have brought the book. I have the book at home, but that's what it Who's says. book? There was a book, Ramones. Uh, it, it came out like in the mid-90s. I should have brought it, but, uh, yeah, and you, was... you were not interviewed in it. Dee Dee was not interviewed in it, but. Uh, and yeah, they, they didn't... say a lot of things, you know. And I'll I wouldn't enough... quit for $500. Well, yes, thousand dollars to shoot. But they said yeah. that cause they didn't have any pictures of you in the in the book, which is right. weird. But they had a picture of no. After I left, they didn't even put me on the website. It was really weird, you know. Like the kids don't know I wasn't in that band for five years, you know. And they so. re- they replaced you for those shows with Clem Burke from Blondie, 
Right. Who's right. called himself Elvis Ramon. Right. And who apparently was so bad. Right. And I'm not sure how, because he's a good drummer. He's a good drummer. I mean. Clem's a great pop drummer and everything like that. But the Ramones is an athletic test. It's not, you know, it's just, did it really you got to go. Did it, did it stretch you musically? Because you're, you're, you're jazz trained, you're classically trained. Yeah, I mean, well, it's all about, you know, the right hand playing, you know, the eighth notes, you know. And I used to practice on a pillow. Very timing based. I, I would say I'm not a drummer, but, you know. No, it's the right hand going, you know, playing that right hand fast. I would practice on a pillow so, you know, it wouldn't bounce back. And that's, that's how, how I, I practice my wrist. But that's a whole different story. So a lot of drummers don't play that beat, which is kind of weird. So, you know, right. everything today, they use two bass drums and it's so annoying to hear right. that. Right, right. You know. So and so you could thank uh, new metal for that. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> in the nineties, and then so then uh, so then Marky replaced replaced uh, him, and then they they kept going. But and I was tell, telling you about Marky, and uh, is there a beef between you and Marky? Do you guys? There's not no get along? beef, but I I think the only thing I said to him was, "Hey, that's it," and all that time. I think after when I got in the band, then he was playing with Richie Starts from the Plasmatics. They had right. some band. And I went there and with Joey, and but we never did nothing. I went to the the Grammy Awards. I was just going to ask you if you went to the Grammys. And we were on the red carpet, and we wanted to picture me, Tommy, and Marky. Right. He ran away. You know, he went really? away. Yeah. yeah, he's just got an. In, there's it, just something going on, I guess, because I, you know. You know, people talk about his wig all the time, so maybe I must have... <laughs> I actually heard that today. Right. That's today <laughs> I'm not going to say maybe you I said, said something, but I was... Maybe I said something uh, at one uh, point, but, you know... It's not like you're going to pull off his wig or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to pull it off. After but. Kim's... Yeah, because... Yeah. Yeah, uh, funny. Because, uh, yeah, you, you, <laughs> Ramones were honored fine. for a Lifetime Achievement Award, and that was you said that was the first time you, Tommy, and Marky were in the same room at the same time. Right, right. Yeah. And, uh, and Ramones were not uh, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and you weren't. No, he always that. was able to sneak in there, you know. And that's that, that's kind of weird, because either you take everybody who was in the band, or you just take the original four, you know. So, so he mean, always got in there. Does it does it bother you, or do you really no, give it doesn't a shit? Bother you could have no. pulled a Frank, you know, you know, probably not Frankie Afonte. Right, yeah. But he's a good, yeah. good old right. friend of mine. Uh, when... Did you see what happened during the Blondie Award uh, no. induction? Oh, he went off. He, he, he went off because they were using like younger players, and he didn't get invited to play. You know, with yeah. the, I mean, Clem got to. But. He, he, he bomb rushed the stage and said, oh, "Can can the original band play?" And Debbie Harry's like, "No." <laughs> yeah, so. no. I mean, it's it's just so, wrong. I, yeah, you just that's have to true. Put you, you know, put it aside just for that right. thing. Right. You know, so you have to, you know, be bigger than that. You know, right. so I don't. Yeah, you know. But uh, so, where did you film your new video? Um, that was here in LA, right? Yeah, yeah. It looked did like you. you did, it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Second cool, Street, right? Second Street Bridge. Yeah, I did the Second Street and... Bridge and Hollywood Boulevard and stuff like that. Oh, that's great. That yeah. actually is a great segue, Josie, because we're gonna play uh, if we have it the uh, the title track to the uh, new album entitled. Let's hear, let's hear a little bit of that. All right. Yeah, why not? Alone. No telephone, no second home 
has. Yeah. That's uh, that's entitled the, uh, the title track. Uh, what are you entitled to? What are you entitled to, Richie? What, to what is that all about? It's not just what I'm entitled. You know, I mean, um, I think the kids, everyone's entitled to more and a better life. You know, we're in a Happiness. time. Yeah, we're in a time that's, you know, kind of tough right now. And, you know, people who can't get jobs, you know. My thing is, man, it would be a really cool world if what you did the best you got to work at. Right. You know, and you took, you know, okay, you're great at this, you're great at that. and Right. You know, I think we're all just entitled now to, you know, right. do better. You well, know? and uh, we were talking about your band. And right. uh, you uh, you have a, a great ba- a bass player, uh, uh, a clear mistake, right? Mm-hmm. And she, uh, you guys were we were talking because uh, you, I, I figured you knew Kim Fowley. Oh yeah, I knew him really well. Because yeah. you guys sort of, I mean, it, it, Josie's kind of the same way. You guys sort of enter a I was room. Very good friends with Kim. Yeah. Right, but I mean, you, the three of you are very similar in that you enter a room and the whole w- room circles around you. Well, he was, you know, he was such an incredible person. And that's like the one thing that's really kind of comforting was looking back at his life was he had 75 unbelievable, colorful, Absol- crazy years. Absolutely. So even though it's always, you know, painful when you lose somebody, at least you can look at his life and go, Jesus, he did not waste a second of it, you know. <laughs> um, he really, really went for it. So. The one thing I loved about Kim was... Um, I could always tell when he was about to say something terribly inappropriate, right. because he, which was all the time. <laughs> yeah. He would start to crack a little grin in the corner Ooh, of his cheek, right. and I would point at him, and then he'd start laughing because he knew I knew that he was going to go there. Right. But I would, I'd always tango with tango right. with him because you know my my dad had a mouth like a biker, and I right. you know I've been go figure I was singing in a punk band, right. you know around a lot of foul mouth people well, so it's it was nothing it was well, like so hanging around with my a grandpa you know with a dirty oh, mouth like, well i'll miss like the <laughs> marathon i mean i used to call it the k-hole because it would be like an eight-hour phone conversation right. if he got you on the phone right but i miss when he would call me at like three in the morning and be like where's the party at i'd be like you're 70 go home right go no home. no he was like, always like, out oh, he was what, are you doing? what is the thing i mean the last couple of years obviously right. he was sick but like yeah even, i would say up until about 70 he was where's no, the party at he, no like, he'd, be, he'd, be, he'd be walking to fetch clubs with a cane i remember I, it was I remember. ridiculous yeah it was but, great uh, though speaking of inappropriate i i was very surprised in my research uh you were in showgirls too yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> there was a showgirls too. I had yeah, no idea. Yeah, it was um, it was the girl who played Penny, Rena Riffle, who is, has a distinction of being not only in showgirls but striptease. Wow, she, she did both, and she decided that um, the, the sequel should happen, and she was not only going to star in it but write it because everyone's dying, you know, Penny's story. Right. So yeah, it, just, it uh, follows her, and so she asked me if I'd play a goth stripper. So I just said sure, and you know, it was a it was a funny couple of days. And, wow. Yeah. And and uh, and you're interviewing people now, uh, or is what you have a web series where you interview people. At- Donut shop? Oh, yeah, I did a couple years ago. Yeah, well, I, you know, I really love to interview uh, paranoid schizophrenics, conspiracy theorists, and donut shops are a hotbed for that because they're kicked out of the bars. They're 24 hours, they're hopped up on sugar and caffeine. Right. And it's just every weirdo late in the middle of the night. So I was like, great, I'll just go up and uh, interview them and well, find their story. Eat, you don't eat donuts. No, but it's not about. It's not about. <laughs> now she's interviewing people about fart jokes. I, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Okay, yeah. we'll talk about the fart jokes. Yeah, I was sure. trying to say say this to the end because yeah. I, I got to segue this into a Richie sure. thing. But you are doing a documentary about fart jokes. I am, but you know what? I have to be perfectly honest. It's it's. It's actually about the history of the fart joke, which is fascinating. The very right. first joke ever in recorded history goes all the way back to ancient Sumerian culture. And it was a fart joke. It was women would run into their husband's lap, sit down, fart, and run away. That's the beginning of recorded civilization. It goes the fart joke. And the reason why I wanted to do this, this uh, documentary is because fart's the great equalizer. Everybody mm-hmm. finds them funny, regardless of class, race, religion, status. It's the one thing. It, it really it translates across the board. Well, so it's like... You're such a beautiful girl. I can't even imagine that but, you fart. No. Well, it's not about me, but it's that's what's so funny is everybody, like, I just interviewed Bobcat Goldthwait. Right, right. Real comedians. Yeah, like, really. And what's Thank funny you. is I, I, I walk up to these people, and I don't know what they think, and I was like, hey, can we talk about farts? And it just, they're immediately, they're like, I signed up for it, and so... It's, 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 great. it's a yeah. great. It's a great. It's a great. It's a great concept. That's why I wish I, I wish I would have thought of it. It was. It's. I mean, it, uh, after the aristocrats, this is the next right. thing. Right. But I actually have to legitimize it. Like I have a Harvard sociologist. I have professors sure. coming in. It's. It's not. Well, what, you know. what, what other comedians did you interview besides Bobcat? Well, Bobcat was. I just started Monday filming it. Oh, like okay. I literally within two weeks of conceiving of the idea, got backing and started shooting. It's gone rapidly. It's so. amazing. I mean, you, you just think in the, the last forty years, Blazing Saddles like was a, a trailblazer. 
Huh? I didn't want to announce that, but I popped it now. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, I just no, want to keep that under wraps, but yeah, yeah, but, yes. okay. I may have some fart, fart legends, yes, right. But, but, <laughs> fart legends. but now, like every children's movie has a fart joke, or else kids won't won't watch it. It does, but it was great when I had Bobcat on. I don't know if you're familiar with Lepetamine, but he was the classic fartist of the Moulin Rouge, and he would fart with an orchestra to music, and he was literally the toast of the Moulin Rouge. Like all of Parisian society would come out to see him, and so we have great farts through history, and you know, I really, right. I really dignify it to the best of my ability. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Is there another fart from history that you could uh, share with our audience? What about oh. like a royal fart or something like that? Oh, well, you know what? That's funny that you said. I found like even there's like political fart stories. Like apparently George Bush had like names for everybody in his cabinet and they were all just like like shit and fart related. I, <laughs> you know, and, yeah, yeah. and actually it was Jello <laughs> Biafra who told me that. So it's, oh, it, wow. um, yeah. So because he, yeah, it's all stuff is coming out of the woodwork. It's really funny. Like so said, will Jello, uh, will, will you get Jello to well, like, I, I just had dinner with him again. the other day. Actually, I'd love because he was. I was at dinner with him, telling him, he's like, "What are you up to, weirdo?" You know, and I was telling him, and he, because he's so political, You're he's with like, "Your iPhone." Okay, tell that story one more time. <laughs> yeah. well, that's, well, that's what's so great about it is just like literally everyone I've spoken right. to has some story. Some so, anecdote. what's your story? What's your fart story? I don't have fart stories. Which one was the uh, smelliest? Huh? Do you have any fart stories? Someone that stink up a bus. No one would admit who farted. I mean, <laughs> there the, you go. So, There's your fart. I, 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 don't know I would think Dee Dee's <laughs> would be the smelliest because of the drug use, but uh, mm, no, I don't know. Probably Joey's would be the loudest. I would think. I don't know. I, you don't I just. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Joey was two rows in front of me. See, we traveled in a van a lot, so I was in the last row and Joey was in the Oh, so you oh, the, the silent, the 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 silent yeah. farts on right. tour well, are like, the like deadliest. Joseph, yeah, I know. Like, like, <laughs> Josie's let out a couple of cheek remember. sneaks on the show. I don't so, remember uh, many yeah. farts, though. I don't remember that. Really? Yeah. You know, oh, okay. They must have... We, I mean, we, we weren't farters. Really? The Rones were not farters? No. You heard it here first. Now yeah. we know. Now <laughs> we know. Exclusive. Now we know. Ario Speedwagon, big farters. That's what I hear. But Ramones, no. But that's great. That's great. So uh, I, I, <laughs> you got me fascinated already. I can't wait to that, see this. Yeah, it's like, I really like to take absurdist, you know, subject matters and treat it seriously. That's like right. my favorite thing to do. So that's what, that's what I'm doing with this. Right, right. And, and it's funny that you should mention uh, Symphony Orchestra because mm -hmm. Richie Ramone, you, you composed uh, a, a uh, piece for the Pastina Pops. Yeah, I arranged oh. a, piece, a West Side Story piece, yeah. It was based on West Side Story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it was a classical piece. And so you performed it as part of the Pastina Pops. Right. And they would take, at the end of the concert, they would take your drum kit out and you would drum along with the symphony orchestra. Right. Mm -hmm. And you were telling me with the reaction of the Pops crowd. No, it was great. I mean, you know. I remember the soundman said he hadn't seen a reaction like that in seven years. The people just went crazy. It brought back like the Gene Krupa, Buddy Rich era. You got to see this. I'm looking Rich. at it. Don't worry Wait. about <laughs> it. <laughs> but, but you said one well, of the violinists this refused dog to play. knows where the pillows are. Wow. <laughs> Nomi, Nomi's a smart dog. Yeah, there was one violin player. He walked off during my performance because he didn't think that was cool. Drum set on the stage. So, And then the last night he stayed because... We were getting such rave reviews, and I, and, no. I mean, and that's amazing. And you also played with uh, Fred Schneider, the B-52s. I didn't play with him. I co-wrote a song for him on his solo record, yeah, called Orbit. Okay, he seems so. like he'd be a lot of fun to work with. Yeah, he was. You know, I thought he, I, he has. He, he seems like he'd have a good, like, funny personality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay, never mind. <laughs> I mean, you know. Any, any, any Fred Schneider the, fart stories? Yeah, the Ramones played, There's a know, monster in my pants. I mean, we what played is, a lot with the B-52s in the 80s. Right, yeah. right. He was a member of the B-52s. We B did a lot of shows, yeah. So. Did you drum with the B-52s? No. Oh, okay. But they would open up for us a lot. Oh, the Ramones would awesome. do yeah. the shows with the B-52s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, and, and... Oh, that, that, that brings up a question. On, on your entitled video, you're playing drums and you're singing, right. too. Right. Um, who, How was there someone work? actually playing, do, when you play live, do you do the same yeah. thing? Do you uh, sing? My or? second guitarist, Ben, he's my punk guitarist. So I can't see doing a, a show singing everything from behind the drums. So I jump out front and Ben jumps on drums. We oh, that's great. So you guys bit. just rotate. Yeah, doing the show a little bit. It works really well, you know. So that And who plays bass? <laughs> Claire that's plays Claire bass. Claire, Claire okay, so Claire... So and then, Alex plays lead guitar. Alex. Uh, right. right on. But Tommy Bolin played on the album. 
by Tommy played on the album. Uh, not not the guy from Deep Purple in the seventies. No. Tommy Bolin from Warlock, the, right. the metal band in the eighties. And he, is it Mark diff- Bolin's son? No, I don't. No. Know. Okay. I, I had different people played on the record before. You know, live's a different ball game. You know. And you just got back from a European tour, right? And you were. I saw you were in Ireland because I just got back from Ireland. You were at the Interpol. Was I? The, I think so. it's the Scotland. Interpol. I didn't go to Ireland. I thought it was in Scotland. Interpol that might have been something. Too. Too. No, 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 no. It was Richie. Maybe, maybe Tommy. Were you? <laughs> <laughs> you were there a few weeks ago, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I just got back last week. Okay. I, I saw. I saw your pictures. Well, here's a question, um, Richie. Why do you think the Ramones are so popular overseas? <laughs> Especially Europe, South America, Japan, but never really broke in America. What are you talking about? They never had a top 40 hit. They never had a top 40 album. Well, They're legends. They inspired every band. But uh, Yeah, but they were playing huge yeah. shows. I mean, yeah. the shows were massive. We never really had radio hits, no. I mean, what what I'm saying is in, in America, they would play... You know, they're, they're like the last but they show. they were played on the a last lot show, of the, Their last show was, at the, was at the Palace. South America, we're like the Beatles down there. Right. That was it, nuts. I, I, okay, I posted that something was, about you and yeah. somebody's like, when are you coming to South America? The, the Latin communities, Spain, you know, I just played Spain. It's wild. You know, the kids there are really wild. They come out, you know, here. I don't, I don't play the States that much because it's like, you know, they come out. If you're not on the radio, they come out and they got their arms folded. They're just not... Right. I, Especially I want them to, LA. <laughs> I want them to really get in my face, right. you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and there's another thing. I, I read uh, there. Gene Simmons made from Kiss made a big deal because he said that rock is dead. Right? It's Do you think rock dead. is dead? No, I mean, it's taking a back seat now. You know, it used there's to be a rock lot and roll, of but it's new taking a back seat. kids in their early twenties that are getting into rock and especially right. glam rock. They keep saying the cycle goes around, but I've been waiting now. It's been. Like- <laughs> For 15 years, you know? Well, you're, you're you know, next I feel to- bad for the kids because they just have to listen to classic rock or old stuff. It's hard. You know, the radios right. don't really have much rock. They No, they don't. You know, they got in this groove now of the of the pop and the hip-hop, and right. that's... And, you know, and, and they're not they're not as pure as we were growing up. You know, they, they'll listen to anything. Come on, Josie, anything. you were never pure. <laughs> True. But Ramones, True. Ramones probably that. get more play now than they did when they were around. Well, they, yeah, after everybody died, they became more popular. So a lot more records. Yeah. You know, like the first album went gold finally, you know? Wow. <laughs> after like, you know, That's what, amazing. 30 years? But we, you're sitting next to the premier tastemaker. If anybody's ahead of the curve, it's Lenora What right. What should we be looking out for 2015? What is cool? Because you are always cool. And you're always surrounded by the coolest people. You know, honestly, I'm I'm in such a bubble right now working on everything. Um, I just I'm not going to pretend that I know what's cool other than authenticity, just because that's a across the board, honest answer. Just, right. Um, I don't, I don't, I wish yep. I had a good answer. Like, oh, this is the thing. It's like, I think everything is so erratic and unpredictable right now. And anything has a possibility to go viral if enough idiots like it. So I don't want to pretend that I what, like have the answer. No, I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. I am. Um, well, it's true. With the internet, anything, anything can go can viral. That's, that's I mean, like this, a, a cat video goes that's viral. Yeah. It's like crazy. I, I cat see videos are the next big thing. <laughs> I see it every day in my job. You know, I, I, I'm a reality TV casting producer. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know that I actually have like a day job and a career and stuff. And li- like literally, I'm seeing trends because I'm, I'm, I'm finding the people that will, I will then for better or for worse, make famous and then right. put on TV and that's what makes things erupt. Um, it's, it's all very character-based. I, I, do, I will say that um, when I got in the game four years ago, I was like, I cast a show called Taboo on Nat Geo and they're like, you're too taboo for taboo. My stories were too outrageous. <laughs> now finally things are actually catching up, which is really nice. I think people's taste level because the internet has become so extreme right. that things like, you know. And people are more jaded. Well, people are more jaded. Well, so I, Give me an example. What was too taboo then that would not be taboo now? Oh, there's a million things. I, I, I inter- well, yeah, I interviewed a guy who had sex with dolphins. Um, he, wrote a whole, <laughs> he wrote a whole book about it called The Wet Goddess. That's kind of taboo. Right? Like I, I did it. That, 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 that's not, that's not, that's not that's taboo. That's probably 
probably hard to do. I did, I did, did a story. Did he take them out of the water? Or they, no, no, no. It was, it, was, it was, well, here's the funny thing. My, my argument with, they're like, they're like, we can't do the story. It's bestiality. And I was like, international waters. And they're like, why are you pushing the story? And I was like, because it's really interesting. And people, because, yeah, so, you know, there's that. And then I, I wanted to break a story on, on I know you're going to think I'm all like pissing shit jokes, but fecal transplants. Fecal transplants are an actual thing right now. They're implanting. What? Yeah, what they're doing is they're taking a healthy baby, right, that has like, you know, a, the digestive tract is like in good shape. They're taking like three their, months Yeah, they're old. taking their fecal matter and they're putting it in a pill that then dissolves and, and kind of opens up in the stomach. And then people who have like colitis and other, you know, stomach disorders, it kind of balances out the flora and fauna, of, you know, rather than having these hor- like horrific gastrointestinal problems. My boss has that. Yeah, no, they're, they're doing, and so they're, they're called fecal fecal transplant and I like knew what the story years ago and was ready to like break it on a national level and they're like you're, you're gross and I'm like but this is an amazing the FDA is right. approving this right now so you know that's like drinking your own pee that was a big thing for a while yeah right? yeah actually uh, yeah, well, some, Jankum, some, yeah Jankum, Jank, okay so Jankum is where you get high on your own supply that's like huffing um, fermented urine and feces <laughs> I, I you know I, I whatever my, my job is now to literally research the most bizarre shit and put it out there in the world right 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 um, so when you ask me what's I already think everybody's weird everybody's deviant i've seen all the stuff but i'll just say at america's taste level for this stuff is now finally like escalating and getting really weird so good job america you're getting, all right america you're getting, you're getting kind she's of she's the one who brings it to you yeah, yeah she's <laughs> bringing the piss and shit and farts to america uh, you know i, I got a lot of catching and she up makes a living yeah, doing that yeah. yeah. she catches yeah. reality yeah. shows yeah. behind the curve true. Oh, yeah, well, true. you can catch up uh, richie i'm uh, sure yeah you but, you know, I'll just say this real quick to sort of, like, bring it. The The best part of my job, though, is on, on the best day, I'm able to give somebody who's maybe been, like, misunderstood or marginalized a voice, you know, by putting them on TV. Because I look for, because I think before me in casting, especially if you're doing the offbeat characters, mm-hmm. they would just find really terrible versions of whatever archetype that just really poorly right. represented a subculture. And mm-hmm. I try and find the most interesting and articulate version of that, you know, and be like, oh, these people are into uh, polyamory, but here's, like, a really nice version of that. Or, right. you know, Instead of being like, like for example, when I did Taboo, I put a Satanist on, but he was a Satanist who took care of his mother who was dying of cancer. Like, here's your friendly neighborhood Satanist, <laughs> yeah. you know, which like, before, you know, and before they would try and find just like the the most horrific, you know, granny swingers that could be your grandmother. Yeah, exactly. Well, right. She knits but, too. But, yeah, but see, but I did that because I wanted to explore senior sexuality because right. seniors are getting STDs at an alarming rate. That's because what they, I heard. Yeah, yeah oh, they, I have a story about it's sing- true. Uh, they, you know, old folks home. They have to separate the they men do. and the women because they, they hook up so much. Yeah, right. It's crazy. Yeah. Do, they do, that, do they do that? Your old whole folks home? Oh, stop it. Oh, I'm just kidding. No, it's true that because they, they, they come from a generation that doesn't use condoms. What they do don't they get do? pregnant. What do they do? The guys they take sex. Viagra and they, 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 they take The women are fighting over the men because yeah. there's the most the women. The women live longer. Yeah. So they're fighting over the men. It's and the true. men are taking and Viagra and uh, the men are taking Viagra. They don't get pregnant. They came from a generation that doesn't use condoms, so the STD rate is through the roof. Right. And so I wanted to, because people are so ageist. I wanted to like do a, you know a show that explored that. So I was like, so what happened was I got that painting of nude B. Arthur. I put it over my bed. Right. The guy I was dating at the time came in and he was like, I can't do this with you here. And I was like. <laughs> Well, I could. I was like, well, I never I, met a guy. Yeah. Who, no, but when I said to him, I was like, like, I, was like uh, yeah. I think you might be a little queer. Yeah, I was like, well, if you can't get down with B, you can't get down with me. You know, I was like, nice. you gotta go. Wow. And I, you and need I, to do t-shirts like that. I know, it'd be good, right? And right. like, instead of a litmus test, I call it a titmus test, you know? Right. And so I was like, I just realized that art's supposed to make you think and feel. So I realized mm-hmm. I had something really powerful with that, you know? Right. And I wanted to explore why is it that people are so horrified if you throw out the idea of like older people having sex? That's, I I hope when I'm I hope when I'm Kim Fowley's age, you know, I'm still. Is that, yeah. I mean, he couldn't what, what use the it towards the end. He showed it to me. Trust right. me. But, but, but I'm just saying, like he, you know, he he pushed it for right. good long time. You know. But, I mean, what is the fashion? Are, are you into older men? Are you into older women? I mean, no, what is the it's not, it's, no. It's, I just want I just wanted to give them, you know, the legitimacy that like it's cool. Like you're older, you're still getting it. Good for you. You look forward to having a, a, a healthy, yeah. a healthy sex life your whole life, right? Absolutely. I think anything goes with right. this one. Oh, oh. But you know what? I'm actually. I'm really just a nice Jewish girl from the valley, so that's, right, that's not right, true. I, right, I surprise yeah. people with Richie, that. Richie, Richie, it might be very perceptive. <laughs> Where does the time go? Let me ask you uh, real quick. Yeah. Another thing, you were, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I know this is kind of a standard question, but because of the uh, Golden Gals Got Wild and sure. all that, 
You be, you were one of USA's characters. Oh, yeah, that's true. I was selected. It was actually kind of amazing. Um, yeah, for USA Network in Vanity Fair, it was crazy. I had a billboard in Times Square with my face. Oh, you I go, remember yeah, that. Yeah, the, the NBC oh, Universal that building. Was like, so cool. Yeah, the 30 Rock building had a giant thing in my where, face. Where were you in New York? Did you go to New York and see Yeah, it? no, they flew me out. Van- Vanity Fair flew me. It was crazy. And it was uh, like, she posted it. Yeah, it was uh, a couple uh, years ago. I mean, don't miss her post. It, I, was, I got it, it was insane. No, it was the kind of thing where, like, cool. what happened was my friend Marla Rutherford is a very famous photographer, and she said, Said, listen, come in for the shoot. You're not going to get it. We're shooting a thousand people. They're only right. going to pick seven. You're not getting it. I was like, whatever. So I just went and had my photo taken. Two weeks later, I get a call from my friend going, "Why are you on a billboard of my apartment? Like, what are you wow. talking about?" Send me a picture. And, and then they, she called me and she's like, "Oh, go pick up Vanity Fair. I open up. There I am next to Iggy Pop. What? Like, uh-huh. no, yeah, it was crazy. Amazing. And then it was on every single stop of the subway. It was it was my face. And and so they had me go around and talk to high school students about. It was really funny because I'd be like, "Don't listen to your guidance counselor. I dropped out of class. <laughs> like, do whatever the fuck you want. Like, right. I do Naked Golden Girls. Right. Have a good time. And I'm right. sure they regretted choosing me after they right, put me right, out there right, in the right. world. But yeah, get a fecal implant. Uh, have sex with your own. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. Dolphins. Yeah, whatever. Right. Five. Also, have a good time, everybody. Olivia, the artist uh, yeah. who uh, painted Betty Page, those famous, she did yeah. a painting of you. Which yeah, I, she's a good friend, and I curate her work, and that was a real honor, too, to be painted. Right. Uh, she was there, amazing. too, signing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It That's amazing. Yeah. You've got quite a lot. And, and uh, you, uh, Richie, also. You played on Joey Ramone. He came out with there was a posthumous album that came out a couple of years ago, like ten years right, after his death. second one. Yeah, he and you did. played on that. How did that come out? Come that out? was great. You know, he had a bunch of different drummers. I think I played four or five songs. Uh, it's kind of hard listening to it because you know you got the headphones on, you listen to Joey sing. You know, it was all done, and then we, <laughs> and then we laid the drums on top. You know, it was kind of I mean, how rough were these demos? What do you mean? I mean, I have the demos were demos. rough, but they really put it through the magic in the studio and made it, you know, right. sound nice. And because uh, Joy, Joy it's Ramone, so funny, you had to listen to him sing. Joy Ramone, ne- uh, never had a bad word to say about uh, you, except I think one. Well, one time he compared your songwriting to Phil Collins, but I think he meant that as a compliment. Yeah. Well, he he meant that that I could produce and I could and sing drummer. and I could play right. drums, right. do everything. Right. Not yeah. But I mean, but and you did everything with the Ramones. And uh, one question before we go, I I, I told you this. I, it goes by so fast. That's it already. I'm yeah. telling you. I'm telling you. It goes by so fast. It goes by we quick. barely scratched the surface. I, 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 I didn't even I I didn't even get to either one of your sex lives or anything like that, which I, I'm very curious about. But uh, um, Tommy produced Too Tough to Die, the original drama. Right. Mm-hmm. How was it working with him? Great. He loved me from the start. He right? just let me do my thing, you know? Well, was was there ever a time where you were drama and he's like, no, no, let me show Never. you how to do it, and uh, he did Never. it? Never. Nobody tells me <laughs> anything <laughs> like that. You know, you know what to do. That was Marky. He had Marky had to, like, take lessons from Tommy to learn the beats. But, <gasps> you know. You and Marky no. have beef. No, just saying the truth. You told well, me your hair looks better. You know. Your hair looks better. But well, you told me you told me in the lobby. So funny. You told me in the lobby that when fans come up to you for things to sign, sometimes oh, he, he covers your face. Stuff on there. Yeah, I, that I, happened to me today. I was in Brazil and the guy showed me. It was cute because he he took picture. another I picture, I picture. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. But he lifted the other picture. Marky drew like a cock in my yeah. mouth. You know. Wait, wait, what so, is it with the cock and balls? You see that in all the bathrooms? Is it because it's like easy to draw? It is, pretty, it is pretty. It is pretty. Every dressing room too. has a cock yeah. and balls. Drawing a vagina that takes talent. T- cock and balls. Yeah. Anybody can do that. Right. It just it, the thing is, you know, sometimes you got it's hair everywhere. on there. Sometimes you get all in the Keith balls. Keith had it down. Right. But, so he drew a cock and balls in your mouth, and yeah, and you would never do that to to some, no. some you know somebody said hi to someone for his name. I can't get involved with that. Right. And uh, I have enough problems just. Well, you know, why would you wig out? Hey, oh, why would you wig out? Richie, if people want to get a hold of you, people want to get the, the new album entitled, are you going to be touring more in South yeah. America? Yeah, we go February what 22nd. Here? Wait, wait, February 22nd, you're going to South America. Yeah. And you guys tour in the United States, maybe? Uh, Middle of April. Yeah, I think I'm going to be in L.A. and San Diego and Long Beach. So I'm finally going to do another West Coast swing. So you could see me in April. So, uh, you can find you know the dates. you are playing on, at here? No. But it's on RichieRamone.com? RichieRamone.com or Richie Ramone Official on Facebook. You can see all the videos and all the fun right. things we do. It's a, it's a great album. And uh, I thank Thanks. you so much for being here. I, I can't believe yeah, it. Yeah, the album can get anywhere. You know, right. Amazon, wherever. Yeah, yeah. The, the, DC Jam yeah, Records. Yeah, Pirate Bay, all that stuff. But... Uh, uh, but you, uh, I, I, you're, you're a great guy. It's great to meet you, and uh, I can't believe I met her, Ramon. It's amazing, and uh, I can't believe I met Lenora Claire a few years ago. And every time I see you, 
Uh, it's just, I mean, you light up a room, obviously. Thank you. And if people want to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? Oh, yeah, LenoraClaire.com, same with Instagram, Twitter, and my app comes out next week, so that'll be really cool. Right. If you want to do that. And Josie Cat, just Google Josie, J-O-S-I. J-O-S-I, Cat, K-A-T, and you'll find all the websites and stuff. And I'm almost, I'm, <laughs> I'm almost ready to cry because this is Josie's last night as official oh. co-host. Yeah. Oh. But don't fret, next week she will be a guest along with her band Carrera, and a lot of hot, beautiful women. Some All our nudity dancers. may happen. And our new co we, we do everything old school. We, we do fireworks. We've been banned from three clubs. She's been banned from uh, not just three clubs, uh, a lot of clubs. I was, I've was i been there a couple times when you've been banned. Uh, we they, have girls on chains. I don't it's remember the same time, but we're going to go out on some Richie Ramone song. Lenora, Richie, Josie, everybody have a wonderfully creepy week. Bye. Bye. Good night, yeah. Dark Minion.